In this video, we're going to work through some systematic naming of esters. And the most important thing to keep in mind is that an ester has two parts you have to deal with. So the first is the portion that's derived from a carboxylic acid. So that is your carbonyl with the oxygen and then your group coming off of that carbonyl carbon. And then the second part is the R group that's bonded to the ester oxygen, which replaces the hydrogen of a carboxylic acid. If you already understand how to name carboxylic acids, it's pretty straightforward how to name esters. The first thing we're going to do, step one, is name this R group that's attached to the oxygen. Then you leave a space, and then we name the portion that's derived from the carboxylic acid. Now, if it were a carboxylic acid, it would have the IC ending, but since it's an ester, we change that ending to ATE. We drop the IC and add ATE. In this example, our R group that's on the oxygen is a three carbon chain. That's a propyl group. Then from our portion that's derived from the carboxylic acid, we'll number out our longest carbon chain. So five carbon carboxylic acid would be pentanoic acid. So what we're going to do, we're going to drop this IC acid and change that to pentanoate as the parent. The only substituent we have to deal with is on carbon 4 we have a methyl. So if we put this all together to generate the overall name for this, we start with the R group and we have propyl. Then we leave a space, list your substituents alphabetically, but we only have one to deal with. We have 4-methyl. And then the parent is pentanoate. Now this next one is a little bit more complex because we have an alkene functional group to deal with also. But first let's name our R group on the ester oxygen. And in this case it's just a tert butyl. Then for our main carboxylic acid parent chain, number one is the carbonyl, or the carbonyl carbon. We have one through four. Now four carbons is typically going to be from the parent butanoic acid. But since we have this double bond to deal with, instead of coming from butane, the AN, that should be butene. So we're going to write this as three butenoic acid. And then, since this isn't a carboxylic acid, but instead it's an ester, we drop the IC acid and add ATE. So that would be 3-butenoate is the parent. Our substituents, we have a 3-methyl and a 2-bromo. So now, putting this all together to generate our name, we start with the R group, that's tert-butyl, then we have bromo and methyl, B comes first alphabetically, so after our space we do 2-bromo, 3-methyl, three 3-butenoate. Three
and this 3 designates the position of the double bond. It's also acceptable if you want to put the 3 right before the EN. So if you wanted, right after 3-methyl, you could write this as but 3 enoate and you don't need to designate the location of the carbonyl because it's um, always carbon 1. The other type of situation you might have to deal with is having an ester attached to a ring. And the rules are very similar. We name the R group on the oxygen, leave a space, but now we name this as a cycloalkane carboxylate. So before we get into looking at the ester, let's first deal with just the carboxylic acid to review that. So when you have a carboxylic acid attached to a ring like we have in this first example here, we actually number the ring and the carbon with the carboxylic acid attached is carbon 1. Now in this case it really doesn't matter because there's not any substituents, but that's the carbon that's assumed to be 1. And this has the carboxylic acid on cyclopentane. So we would name this as cyclopentane carboxylic acid. And the reason you get that extra um, carbox part of the name is because the carboxylic acid carbon isn't part of the parent which is your ring. So now if we transition to esters what we have to do is we'll drop the IC acid and change that to ATE and then we also have the R group on the ester to deal with. So for this one we have our R group on the ester which is just methyl and then our parent is cyclopentane carboxylate. Just one final example with a ring. Uh, this one's a little bit more complex. We're going to again name this as a cycloalkane carboxylate. Remember that the ring containing the ester or carboxylic acid is carbon-1. Then we number around this ring to get the lowest substituent numbering. So in this case, that would be counterclockwise. So we have 1 through 7. This parent is going to be cycloheptane carboxylate. Now we do have our R group on the ester to deal with. This is a four carbon chain, that's a butyl group. And then we also have substituents to deal with. We have on carbon two, a methyl, and on carbon three, an ethyl. Okay, so always start your name with the ester R group, that's butyl. Leave a space. Now we'll write our substituents alphabetically. 3-ethyl, 2-methyl, and then our parent, cycloheptane carboxylate.